Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to implement the bubble sort using C. In the last tutorial, I explained the bubble sort algorithm. I hope you are comfortable with the bubble sort algorithm by now. Let's go ahead and implement the bubble sort using C programming in this tutorial. Okay, we are going to need two helper functions for the purpose of doing the sort. And you can see that the first one is the input array that I have declared at line number five. This is going this is receiving the base address to the array and the total number of elements in the array and the purpose of this function is to read the content of the array from the keyboard supplied by the user and to place them or assign them to the array elements the second one is the display array and that's going to display the content of the array into the output console it is also receiving the base address of the array that it is supposed to display and the total number of elements in the array and the third one that's the bubble sort implementation is going to receive the base address of the array that it is supposed to sort and the total number of elements in the array that is the size okay I already have implemented the input array and the display array you see that the input array is straightforward it is running a for loop starting from i equals 0 up to i less than size and on each iteration it is getting the content from the keyboard and assigning that to the array index i and display array is also straightforward you can see that it's running a for loop starting from 0 up to i less than size and on each iteration it is actually displaying the content of the array the ith index element of the array and after displaying 10 numbers on each line it is changing the line it is creating a new line here so i have given this if just to check whether it has printed 10 numbers into the console and then it will just create a new line and will go to the next line well, let's now go ahead and implement the bubble sort method. We are going to need three variables there, i, j, and temp. I will use both i and j as the loop counter. So for the out of all loop, I will start from zero and it will iterate as long as i is less than size minus one. And on each iteration, we are going to increase i by one. Now for the inner for loop, j will start from zero and it's going to iterate as long as j is less than size minus one minus i and on each iteration we are going to increase j by one and within the inner for loop we are going to test whether the jth element is greater than j plus one element or not if the jth element is larger than j plus one element we are going to swap jth element with j plus one element that's the logic of bubble sort and that i explained in the last tutorial so we are going to compare the jth index element arrj with the next one that means ARRJ plus 1. If indeed the jth element is larger, then we are going to swap the jth element with the j plus 1 element. So we are going to take that element at index j and we will assign that to the temporary variable temp and then we are going to assign the j plus 1 element to the jth element and then finally the j plus 1 element will be assigned with temp and we are done we are done implementing the bubble sort so this is the algorithm that I already explained in the last tutorial if you are still finding this uh, complex you can just go to the previous tutorial and can understand how this for loop is working to get the array sorted in ascending order now if you are interested of doing a sorting in descending order then instead of this greater than sign you are supposed to write a less than sign that means you are actually moving the uh, lowest number at the bottom of the array instead of the highest number that you are doing here for actually ascending order sorting okay I'll just keep it as greater than sign and you can experiment with the less than sign let's go ahead and write the main method here we are going to need a size and we are going to ask the user to input the size input the number of elements in the array and then we are going to scan that okay so percent D and percent size then we are going to allocate the array using the malloc function call and for that we need a pointer and I'm using the malloc you can use the calloc whatever you wish size of integer times size now if the malloc fails if the size is too large then it may happen that the malloc fails to allocate the requested memory so we need to check this technically 
So if the malloc returns a null, that means the malloc failed to allocate. And I already have explained these things earlier, right? So unable to allocate memory for the array. And we need to terminate this program, just return zero. Okay, great. So we are done with allocation of the array. Now we are supposed to read the content of the array. So we are going to call the input array function and we're going to pass the base address of the array that is there at ARR pointer and the size of the array. The input function is already there. That's going to take care of the input. And then we are going to display the unsorted array. Okay, so unsorted array. And to display the array, we can just call the display method that's already there and, so, and once the display is done we can just call the bubble sort to sort the array in ascending order and then we are going to print the sorted array again by using the display method so this time the message is going to be sorted array okay and you're going to call the display function once more here to display the sorted array we are done implementing the bubble sort algorithm and the main function also this main function is going to test the bubble sort for us let's go ahead and run this okay here we go it is asking for the number of elements i'm going to give five so the first number 90 next minus 10 45 12 and then 56 so you can see that First of all, it is displaying the unsorted array as it is given. All the numbers are given from the user, from the keyboard. And then it is printing the sorted array. You can see that the sorting is done there. Okay, so that's it. That's how we implement the bubble sort. Now in the next tutorial, I'm going to modify this bubble sort a little bit. That's going to make it a little bit efficient. So join me in the next tutorial to understand that. Thank you for watching.